is the guy that's coming out now is the man you've been waiting for, Rick Kua. Let's do it. Kua, 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 yeah! All right. How you guys doing? Y'all ready for some rock and roll? Okay. Sing it to the Lord, say, Jesus, we're following you, we're doing the right thing, we're walking straight ahead, and we're not turning back, okay? All right, let me hear you now. One, two, we got my road.
in Potsdam, PA. You gotta wear your... Wear your... Wear your... Yeah. 
tell you something, we all got some muscle, right? But we gotta learn to flex the muscles that Jesus gives us. Standing on the edge, you want to take a step and reach out and claim your share. And when you reach, the world comes crashing down upon you. You can run away or face what's scaring you. Feel it deep inside, but still you move cautiously. You start to teach your head closer to the prize you've waited for so patiently. And when you move, the strength comes rising up within you. Now with all your might, it's time you learn to you guys Woo! all right how about a hand on guitar keys and vocals for Chad Welling also on guitar and vocals Billy McDermott on drums and vocals Michael Mead Yeah, our sound man, David Shirley, and John Birdwell on the lights. Okay, guys. Pottstown, it's good to be back. Woo! We're doing a lot of stuff from the new record, but we're going to get to a lot of your favorites, too. So, This song here coming up is also on Wear Your Colors. That's the whole theme of this tour, to wear your colors for Christ, to get out there, not be ashamed of the gospel. Don't be ashamed of who you are in the Lord. Get out there and... Do the right thing for Jesus. Amen. All right. This next song here talks about the fire that burns in my heart. And I want to tell you something. I've got a fire that burns every day in my heart for my wife, for my kids, for my family, my parents, my brothers and sisters, my dear, dear friends. It's a fire that burns strong in here. And I pray that you guys got one too. This is this raging fire. The 
test will begin with the blink of an eye. You see, you must face one more sunrise. But it's trial by life. Will you measure up? You pray that your best will be good enough. And though these hearts may grow weary, somehow we carry this torch. I feel the flame rising in me like it never burned before. This raging fire will never go out. This raging fire will light our way home. This fire will never go out. It'll burn through the doubt and tell you you're not. been here before, in the eye of the storm, with only the flame to keep me warm. I'll fight through the wind, with you I can, I've made it before, and I'll do it again. Heaven alone is our journey, but it starts on the road we take there. If we hold the torch real steady, we'll shine. raging fire thank you let me tell you something about Jesus you know if you guys got some trouble in your life if the devil's bugging you I know with me whenever I get an area where I'm having a hard time the devil comes right in and starts poking away at me just trying to drag me through the mud but if we call on the name of Jesus Christ and say Lord come in and take care of that devil for us you know what he says let me at him <laughs> Corners of my life, I keep them covered by the darkness of the night. I hide my heart when your light comes near. I hear you say, This time we'll make the shadows disappear. Let me out of I'll fight the demons in your soul. Let me out of I'll catch the criminal who stole your heart. I have had heroes I thought would save my life. They took what they could and rode off in the night. But you're my 
To conceal, let me out. I'll fight the demons in your soul. Let me out. I'll catch the criminal who stole your heart. Nothing can touch you, but he is near. Don't quit. The shadows disappear. Let me out. I'll fight the demons in your soul. Let me out. I'll catch the criminal who stole your heart. Let me out. I'll fight the demons in your soul. Let me out. I'll catch the criminal. Thank you. We got an army with Jesus. You know that, don't you? He'll come in and clean house. You guys, what do you say? You're, you're full of energy tonight. I see some old familiar faces here. Okay. Listen, I want to talk to you just for a second about Compassion International. Tell you a little bit about them. All right. It's an organization that helps kids, needy kids all over the world. About seven months ago, Steve Camp, Rob Frazier, and myself went to Mexico City, and we got to see firsthand some of the poverty conditions that exist in the world. We saw a little girl over there on the first night that we, were, that we had arrived. It was late, maybe about midnight, and we were downtown in Mexico City, just blocks away from our hotel room, there was a little girl sleeping, leaning up against the building, and she was a wreck. This kid looked to be five or six years old, and she looked really hurting. No adults around anywhere. She was all alone, and she was asleep, and her little hand was right out from under her shawl. I mean, even though she was sound asleep, probably hadn't had a decent meal, she looked sick, her hand was waiting for a handout. And I mean, it was right there, right in front of our face. I mean, the stuff that we see on TV and that we read in the magazines and in the newspapers, it was right there. The next day, in contrast to that, we saw kids the same age that are compassion-sponsored children that were being fed. They had school uniforms on. They were going to school. They were happy, healthy, reciting Bible verses. And it was all because they had sponsors. 
These kids could have been on the streets sick and without food like that little girl the other night and like millions of other kids. But the kids that Compassion takes care of, they're taken care of by us guys and by you guys and by people all throughout America that care enough to give some of the money that the Lord has blessed them with to help a life. I want to just tell you, it's $21 a month. It provides them with food. That's hot meals. They get a hot meal, one hot meal a day, and... Hey, it's great to be a Christian. It is great. Dave, a little more of this in there, if you don't mind. I'll tell you something. I've been a lot of things, but I haven't enjoyed anything like I've enjoyed being a Christian. Because God rewards those who love him. And even if you don't get it here, as much as you think you would like it, heaven is going to be a much better place. Amen? Just remember, you are the Bible that some people will read. So when the odds are against you, you stand tall and you be a light for Christ. And even if you don't get paid but right back then and there, remember it's never for nothing.
fight. Fight for someone who fights for you. Fight for God. One, two, three, fight! Listen for that new record, Spring of 87 on Sparrow Records, Margaret Becker. Oh, we love that gal. Woo! Hey, come on, give me a little rebel yell out there. All right, you guys, we're gonna do a few more songs from the new record. This one is Unchained. Trying to get a loose, trying to get away Looking for the chance to go another way Thought nobody needs me, 
The boys and I had been shocked, couldn't say goodbye. But I feel the truth coming on.
Is that right? The Rock is Jesus, you guys. They've been screaming about our music for a long time now, but I'm telling you, just like that song says, we got The Rock, we're on a roll. There's a hunger deep inside our souls. It's our time, our time. Don't look back. Nobody's gonna talk us off the right track. Now what that means, you guys, is that Jesus has given us a confidence in what we do. We believe in this music. We believe in the music we play because Jesus made us believe in it and gave us the confidence we need. So we don't have to listen to folks that say it's from the devil, it's from the pit of hell, God can't use it, it's no good. We need to love those people and pray for them, but we don't need to let them change our minds. If you've heard from Jesus, we've heard. Have you heard? All right. Okay. And we need to pray for Amy Grant, and we need to pray for Petra and Mylon and all these guys. There's a lot of Christian rockers out there, Rob Castles, a lot of people that are getting criticized because of their music. We need to pray. We need to pray for them. One of the things that we're asking for on this tour is we're asking for prayer and support from the local churches. We need it. We need it bad. There was a time where I was kind of a, I felt pretty rebellious, and I was out there saying, hey, we're going to do this, and if they don't want to, listen and support us well who cares well that's wrong and that saddens the Lord and one thing that I've learned is God cares God cares when his people are divided what blesses God is for us to unite and be one person every one of us no matter if we're in church old young we like rock and roll or we don't we're all out there for the same purpose to spread the gospel of Jesus and to draw people closer to the Lord we need to pray for each other what I tell people night after night, uh, a lot of times I'll do interviews from the hotel room for jobs maybe two or three weeks or four weeks down the road. And they'll say, well, what do you want to say in closing here? And inevitably I'll always say, listen, if you don't like our music and you don't want to come to the concert because it's not your style, we understand. I would no more drag somebody in here that didn't like rock and roll than I'd shoot them. I wouldn't do it. If they don't like it, I understand. But do me a favor, this is what I tell these people, please pray for us. And even if you don't know what God's doing through rock and roll and you're not sure, then pray for one thing. Don't pray that Rick Kua's will will be done here tonight or that your will will be done or Dorn Reppert's will. Pray that Jesus Christ, the Lord's will, will be done in this concert and in every concert we do. That's a safe prayer. Whether they like the music or not, whether they like me or not, just pray to the Lord that God's will will be done when we go out and play. And that's what I'd ask you guys to do too. Pray for us. Tell your churches, we need your support. We need it bad. We're out there working for Christ, every one of us, and we need to stand together. Right? Okay, listen, a little challenge for you. This week, when you're out there in, in your jobs or at school or at home, if you see somebody that's having a tough time, somebody that's depressed, looking sad, go up to them, give them a hug, love them, encourage them a little. In the name of Jesus, go towards them. Do, do what Jesus would do. Jesus would be drawn towards these people. Don't turn away because they're hurting and you're afraid you're going to get bummed out. Go towards them and love them. You might save their life. <laughs> Help us! Hey! Hey!
So you think you found that answer A cure for all your ills A voice cries from the mirror Point the gun, shoot to kill Terror of the moment Is making you decide You can say yes to life Or take the one way right Come on, don't say suicide The way to stop the pain They gave it all to the Lamb of God And not a trace remained Jesus pulls no punches He's laid it on the line He wants your life for what it's worth It's like gold to be refined Don't say suicide It's your mind. All the light that comes from hell Decision time approaches Which way will you choose? Billy McDermott.
To run home, buried under my problems. Turn the lights down, I was not bound. One way out, take a deep breath. Such a slow death, so many changes. And will it ever end? Don't I have a friend? One way out, one way out of this confusion. hard clay just to keep me alive I had to push and fight and never to see it right a one way out always against the wall nothing to break my fall it was wearing me down and if I only knew I didn't have a clue one way out one way out of this confusion all I love Look around, in and out of town, not to see it again. It takes a lot of change to stop your growing pains. One way out. Gotta listen now, just throw in the towel. Snatch your fight. Come on, you turn it blue, he'll do it all for you. One way out. One way out of this confusion.
It's the young blood flowing out there. Yeah, all right. Well, we're not done yet. I want to talk to you for a second. You don't mind, do you? Nah, okay. Woo, good to be here. It's the Wear Your Colors Tour. It's a scripture in Mark that I read a while ago. It really blessed me. I got saved in 1977, and... Uh, I knew the Lord. I had a born-again experience, as they say. It wasn't like, you know, fireworks and everything. It was pretty subtle, but I knew God was real, and I accepted Jesus. I read a scripture several years later in Mark. It was Mark 8, 38, and it says, this is Jesus talking. He says, if you're ashamed of me in front of men in this sinful generation, then I'll be ashamed of you in front of my Father and the heavenly angels. And when I read that scripture, I realized that even though I was a Christian, I was only a Christian in church. I was only a Christian with my Christian friends and when I wanted to be one. But when I was out there gigging around in the bars and doing my thing, I was still a Christian, but not really. Not 100%. I wasn't wearing my colors for Christ. In fact, I was ashamed of the gospel. And I was ashamed of Jesus. 
I mean, there's no, that word, I didn't want to admit it. I didn't want to say that word. But, I mean, let's face it, the reality of it is, if you can't talk about Jesus in front of your friends, or you have to drop your voice to such a whisper when you say Jesus, then you're ashamed. And that scripture nailed me, it nailed me hard. And here, you were, here we are probably seven years later. Maybe I read that in 79, and this is 1986, and the brand new record out is Wear Your Colors. Because it's how I feel now. It's how I felt in 79, and it's how I felt every year after that. That was probably the single most important scripture in my life. Something that made a big change in me. It gave me boldness. It made me realize how important it is for us to get out there and proclaim Jesus as Lord. To wear our colors. There's a lot of people that, you know, get behind a political candidate. And they'll have, they'll have the pins and the buttons and the... They'll pass out the bumper stickers and they'll go door to door. And they're excited about this guy. And when he wins the election, they have a big party. And there's a lot of people that get excited about football teams. And if they make it to the Super Bowl, boy, they're real excited. And if they win the Super Bowl, some of them, they're lucky if they're alive the next day, the way they, they party and have a good time. They're tickled about it. They're waving a flag. They're raising up a banner. What I'm asking you guys to do is what the Bible told me to do about seven years ago, and that is if we're going to wave anybody's flag around, let's make sure it's the flag of righteousness. Let's make sure it's the flag that Jesus Christ wants us to wave. Let's lift our standard as Christians. Every day, lift it a little higher. Lift that banner just a little bit higher. Hey, it's great to get excited about ball teams and about everything. God wants us to be excited about everything we do. If we work at McDonald's flipping hamburgers or if we're, uh, if we're in school struggling away or if we're just home helping our parents out or helping uh, your husband or wife or whatever, God wants us to be excited about that and do it as unto him. Do everything with all our might. But first we have to be excited about him. Our priorities have to be straight. God has to be way up here and let everything else fall into place underneath. And like it says in the Bible, and you've heard the scripture a million times, but it's another one that's so real to me. If we seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, then all these other things will be added to us. So that's the challenge for you guys. It's a daily challenge. It's not something new. It's not something you haven't heard before. But I know in my life it's the simple things that go right by me all the time. Oh, John 3, 16. Oh, right by me. You know, seek first the kingdom of God. I've heard it a million times. But it's the, it's the simple things we need, you guys. Yes, we need to get deeper in the word. And we need to uh, just, you know, have more quiet time with the Lord and, and do more and more. But we need to remember those simple truths because those are the ones we need to live by every day. If there's somebody in this place tonight that doesn't know Jesus as their Savior, I want to tell you what we believe. We believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, died for our sins, rose from the dead, and is right now alive in heaven, sitting at the right hand of the Father. Amen. Amen. We also believe that we're sinners, every one of us in this room, everyone in the world. Only Jesus Christ was without sin. Your pastor sins, I sin, Billy Graham sins, Amy Grant sins, all of us. If we were without sin, if there was one man, then maybe Jesus would have thought twice. But he knew, God knew that he had to send his son to die for us because we're not perfect and we do sin. But we believe that we are sinners but we are repentant sinners we are sorry for our sins is what that means we don't just do it every day and who cares we're sorry for our sins if you believe that Jesus is Lord he died for you you are a sinner but you're truly sorry you say Lord come into my heart be the Savior of my life I want a personal relationship with you I want to go right to you when I have a problem I want to know you personally I ask you into my heart, I'm sorry for my sins. You're my Lord, then you're saved. That's what we believe. 
And if there's somebody here that wants to accept the Lord tonight, then there's no time like right now. I'm going to give you a chance to do it. And if there's somebody here that is like many of us and you know Jesus, but you haven't been walking with the Lord, and maybe something happened this evening or something during the night that made you realize that, hey, I was like Rick was, ashamed, and maybe that's the way you are right now. You're quiet. You're Christian friends. Everything's cool. In school, it's a different story. If that's you and you want to say, Jesus, in front of everybody here and in front of you in this band, I want to rededicate my life to you because I am a sinner. And I'm realizing how much I fall short. Well, then I want you to come and I'm going to pray with you too. We're not going to play the organ music and go through the whole thing. I'm just going to, what am I going to do? I'm going to, see that exit sign over there? I'm going to go right in that hallway, and I want everybody in here to just pray. We got another song for you. We're not done yet, and we're not going to do, we're not going to wait all night for people to come. But if God's talking to you, listen, obey the Lord. A lot of people say, oh, just pray that God moves tonight. Man, God moves all the time. It's us that don't. We don't move. The Lord's always moving. Amen. We need to respond. If you're feeling like you're getting a little jittery and it's, oh, boy, I think this is me, man, don't fight it. Respond. Don't worry about your, your friend here. Don't worry about these people. They're not going to get you to heaven. Only Jesus is going to get you to heaven. If you're ashamed of them, that's one thing, but don't be ashamed of God because we know what the consequences are. He'll be ashamed of us in front of his Father and all the angels. And I know I don't want that to happen. It's hard. It's hard to make a stand for the Lord. A lot of people, you know, we look at certain groups of people, and we think these are the cool ones. They get high. They get drunk. They're good looking. They dress great. They do all this other stuff. And, you know, you want to kind of, you know, be accepted. We all want to be accepted. But let me tell you, it's not the tough guy or the tough girl that goes out and gets high and gets drunk out of their mind and does all those evil things and sins and runs with the crowd. That's simple to do. That's easy to do. Believe me, it's easy. What's hard to do is make a stand for Christ in front of those people and in front of your friends and say, I'm not getting high. I'm not going to do that because it makes God unhappy. That's why. Enough. No other reason. What other reason do you need? That's a big man and a big woman. And I'll tell you, once you make that stand, it'll be tough at first. But once you do it, it gets easier and easier and easier. And it'll get to the point that even though temptation comes by, and sometimes you may fall to certain things, believe me, you won't give it a second thought after a while because you'll get stronger and you'll get built up. And the more of Jesus that's in you, the less of the enemy that there's room for. You believe that? Amen. So guys, listen. I'm going to go over by that exit door and please... If you want to accept Jesus tonight as your Savior, I'm going to pray with you. If you want to rededicate your life, I'm going to pray with you. But only those two things. Afterwards, we don't go anywhere. We're the last ones out of this building. So when we're all done, I'm going to come on out, and I want to meet everybody and say hello, and we'll have time to visit a little. But for now, if you want to accept Christ or rededicate your life, it would be a privilege for me to pray with you guys. Please, bow your heads. Christians, be in an attitude of prayer. I'm going to go over there and just wait a few minutes. Please meet me and we'll pray.
Lord God, I ask you to bless each one of them. I ask you to bless everybody in this building. Those of us that know you, God, I just pray that, that we can truly draw closer to you every day, Lord Jesus. And if there's anybody here that doesn't know you, God, I pray that your love overwhelms them the same way it overwhelmed me nine years ago. We love you, Jesus. We thank you for this tremendous night. We praise you, and we lift up these prayers in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.
first, number one. God bless you guys. Praise the Lord. We love you guys. We'll see you next time. Yeah. And then pandemonium broke loose. All right, come on. Really loud. Rick Kua. This is the most fun I've ever had at a concert here in Pottstown. We want him back, right? Let's get loud. They're coming back. All right. Chad, come over here. Where is he? Oh, God, he killed himself. Oh, I would, you know, I could, I could go into all the funny stories about, you know, I've been, I was in a group called the Outlaws, and we used to play for, like, you know, big stadiums. We played, where are we now? We played the Spectrum a bunch of times, and, you know, 15, 20,000 people. And we had a guitar player, Freddie Salem, and he'd run. Freddie would run from the back of the stage to the front, and one night, he, he, he landed right on his knees, and boy, he came this close to going off a 10-foot drop, and it was like, whoa. But we got that little precious moment on film tonight. <laughs> you guys, we love you. I want to tell you something. We got a birthday boy in the, in the house tonight. Dorn Reppert Jr. It's, it's happy birthday, Dorn Reppert Jr. Where is he? Come out here. Take a bow. Come on, my man. We'll play one for him. Let me ask you something. You guys believe you can still rock and roll? Well, then help me count it. Come on. One, two, one.
God bless you. We'll see you next time. We love you. Thanks a lot for coming out and making this one of the best ones we've ever had. You've been the greatest audience we've ever had here in Pottstown. So go out and tell your friends what a good time it was, all right? Yeah. How many would like to see Rick back? What did you think of Hybrid Alliance? Okay. All right. Remember, Jesus loves you. We'll see you.